All right, so this week we will be talking about correlation. Oops. Correlation is simple linear regression. So um, for correlation, remember that this P is what we use to talk about population correlation. Remember, it's different than our, um, our proportion P, so make sure you recognize that. We call this rho. And then this R is going to be our sample correlation. We find that with mini tab. And um, these are just the different types of Rs that you can get. Basically, they have to be between 0 and 1, similar to proportions. Um, and this kind of gives you an idea of what um, each of them means. You know, so closer you are to 0, the weaker it is, farther away from 0 you are, the stronger it is, which can be farther away in terms of positive 1 or negative 1. That's why we have absolute value here. Okay, so hypothesis testing for correlations. It's literally the same exact thing um, that we've been doing for all hypothesis testing except for this one. Um, the assumptions are that you have to make sure that you have quantitative variables and then the relationship has to be linear for us to do this. And then our um, known alternative, remember we're using a population symbol here, and then um, it's gonna be equals. So the, the null would be that there's no relationship at equals zero, and then not equal to zero would be an alternative saying there is a relationship. We change that in terms of if it's um, it was asking if there's a positive relationship, negative linear relationship, so on and so forth. And then many tab, you use that to compute your R, your test statistic. Um, and then your p-value is going to be, the last few steps are always the same. Get that p-value, um, but recognize though, um, there's a caveat here for correlation, that when you get p-value, it's always going to give you, um, if it's not equal to, it's going to give you a two-tailed test. Um, it's going to give you so that p-value times two, basically. So if you recognize that you are only doing a one-tailed test, um, make sure you divide that p-value by two in order to only get that one tail there. Okay, simple linear regression is very similar to just probably um, your idea of what lines are the equation for a line. Um, it's called simple because it's only one explanatory variable, and then it's linear because it's a straight line. Um, so this is just the equation for it. I would just, you know, kind of understand this. You've probably seen this before as y equals mx plus b. The situation. Um, so, yeah, those are the different. These are just, and I mean, so yeah, your predicted value of y, y hat, and then your y intercept and your slope, x is going to be whatever x value you get um, to plug in there. So that's how you would find for simple linear regression. Okay, so using mini tab, you can check the assumptions of um, simple linear regression if you were to do a hypothesis test for these. So, linearity, you want to use that scatter plot of um, two variables. So, all you want to do is make sure that it looks like a line. If not, that assumption isn't met. The second one, you want to use a plot of residuals because that's going to be your errors. Um, and you want to make sure that there's no sort of, um, that there's not any sort of relationship because that means that they're independent if there's no relationship, no sort of trend. Um, so the correlation should be, should be about zero there in order for that to, to work. Uh, the third one, normality of errors, you want to use your um, normal probability plot. And um, you can also look at a normal approximation histogram to make sure it's normally approximated. And um, if there is a normal approximation, normal curve there, then we can say that the errors are approximately normal. Um, that's how you check that one. And then lastly, equal variances. That's saying, remember this is like the spread. So equal variances, it's, um, so you're using the plot of residuals versus fits. Um, so saying, you know, kind of how far they are away from each other, how far that spread is. Um, and you want to make sure that there's, um, it's the same across all of them. There shouldn't be any sort of, that's why obviously equal variances, there shouldn't be any sort of um, pattern to it. Some common ones that you'll see if this condition isn't met, it's like a megaphone or like kind of like a bow tie looking thing. Um, but if there's no, if there's no uh, pattern in there, you can assume that this was met. Okay, and then moving on, remember confidence intervals are never going away. So if we're doing for a slope, our confidence interval, our point estimate here, you know, remember we used to do like p hat or x bar or whatever, here it's going to be our slope, plus or minus, and then the t star is going to be our multiplier, um, and then the standard error of our slope. So that's like just the equation you can use. Um, and then beta, um, such with one, is basically saying the population slope, and this is your sample slope, b, such with one. Okay, and then just our coefficient of determination. All that is is say, all you're doing is taking your um, r and squaring it. So, and the definition of it is 
the amount of variation in the response variable that can be explained by our explanatory variables. Remember, explanatory variables is independent and that's what's explaining our response. And this is kind of going a little bit more in depth and saying, well, how much of that variation can be explained by the explanatory variable? You know, is there other contributing factors, so on and so forth. And then also keep in mind that, especially when we're talking about this linear regression, that um, outliers can happen. Outliers, you know, can definitely skew our data. Um, which you guys probably recognize and remember from box plots and whatnot, um, similar idea. And then extrapolation is basically saying that you're going outside of your um, data set to make some sort of conclusion that's not, um, you can't use, you know, you can only make, you know, inferences and conclusions about the data set that you have. You can't use ones that are, you know, far away um, and not within your immediate data set. All right, so let's try this question. So which of the following cannot be answered from a regression equation? Um, so go ahead and read through these. Let me know what you think it is. Okay, and then so our answer here is going to be um, D. So we can't figure out if it's linear or nonlinear unless we actually, you know, plotted it and went through all of that and um, and also, you know, kind of found out more about the population. But the rest of these, you can figure this out um, in terms of so predicting the uh, value of y to particular value of x, that's our y hat, remember? And then um, the slope between x and y, that's our b subscript one. And then our estimate whether it's positive or negative, that's just gonna be if it's a positive b subscript one or a negative. So d is the only one that we can't do. Okay, so our regression between foot length, response variable in centimeters, and height, which is our explanatory variable for 33 students, resulted in the following regression equation here. So one student in the sample was 73 inches tall, had a foot length of 29 centimeters. What is the predicted foot length here? So go ahead and try to solve this one out. And then we can go over it together. So if we were to write this out, we would end up getting, you know, y equals 10.9 because that's going to be our, um, if we're looking at that equation, our um, y-intercept, and then plus um, 16, excuse me, 0.23, which is our multiplier there, and then times um, 73, which is the height. Um, and then if we went and solved this out, you're going to get about 27. 0.69, which is why that's why our answer here is going to end up being um, going to be B. All you had to do is plug in, you know, the 73 inches here um, for that X, because remember X is going to be our explanatory variable, um, and then our response variable is going to be Y. But um, so yeah, that's what we were trying to look for was our response variable, predicted foot length. Once again, so that's why our answer is B there. That's just kind of a plug and chug one. All right, and then number three. So in the simple linear regression equation, what does X represent? So this is just kind of discussing which one is which. Okay, so our answer to this one is going to be D. Um, our explanatory variable is going to be represented by our um, by the x. b subscript 1 is our slope, y intercept is the b subscript 0, and then the estimated predicted response is y. So honestly, these are actually written in the order that they appear in the equation, if that helps. All right, and lastly, a study is conducted comparing student's height versus the height of their father. The correlation between the father's heights and student's heights for 79 male students was r equals 0.669. What is the proportion of variation in son's heights explained by the linear relationship with father's heights? So all you have to do for this one is this has to do with our coefficient of determination. Um, so remember, you just want to do r squared. Um, and if we did that, we would get 0 0.669, um, which is our r. And then we square that. We're going to end up getting 44.7561 which will round to being about 44.8%, um, which is why we would choose our answer as being um, A. And realize though that it wouldn't be um, C because it's not plus or minus, we squared it, so it's plus. Um, and it's also because it's talking about 
the original R was positive, so that's why we wouldn't have to change it to being negative. Um, that's what our answer is A. All right, so, yep, obviously go check out the reviews online, start studying for the final and everything. Um, we will let you guys know about the schedule for finals next week. Um, and if you haven't given me your pencil and email, please go ahead and do that for me. And if um, you guys have any more questions, let me know. If not, have a great night.